up everybody? So we're back out of the shop with another daily vlog and guys, it's time to do some handle scale shaping. So that's what we're going to work on today. We're going to get these all nice and shaped up. I don't know exactly how much contouring I'm going to do just yet. I think I'm just going to kind of work with this one and figure out as we go how I want it shaped. But it's already really comfortable in the hand. What I want to do though is I want to kind of do a little bit of profiling this way and then some inside here do some more contouring and then we are going to take this back piece right here and we're going to be like bevel it or taper it back where the lanyard is going to be so we're going to be doing a few different things like that let's jump into it see how it goes so what we want to go ahead and do here is just smooth both sides of the handle scales from where we had to cut off the pins and then we're just going to go around the outside of it and get it shaped back to the tang itself or the handle so that whenever we go to the next step everything is where it needs to be on the outside and all we have to do is just start shaping and rounding and smoothing out the handle scales but for some of this video I'm just gonna let y'all watch as I do this there's not a whole lot of talking that needs to be done during the bulk of this just because I am showing you most of the handle scale making and it's really just going to be me shaping while y'all watch y'all listen to some banjo music So now that we're on this step, we're going to go ahead and just put a little bit of an angle all the way around where we're going to be doing the primary contouring. And we're going to start getting that shaved back to where it feels comfortable in the hand and we get rid of any hot spots where it might uh, feel uncomfortable in your hand when you're gripping it. And I'm doing a little bit of contouring in the belly. I'm not going to do as much contouring as I did on the knife that we called the Wanderer because that had a whole lot of contouring I just wanted just enough to get plenty of grip on it when you're holding it uh, but not to go too crazy with it and like I've said in other videos there's no real angle that I try and do on these I, I know a lot of people have you know jigs set up to where they can do a 45 degree angle all the way around it or they can change that a lot of this is going to be just what feels natural whenever you're shaping it and going by that there's times when jigs are awesome and there's times when doing things by hand and freestyling it leads to a really good result and it also helps you control your hands whenever you're doing things like shaping with bevels and all that stuff as much as you can do without jigs, the better. And you can see right here where I decided to go ahead and taper it around where the lanyard's gonna go. Now we've got some pretty rough lines in here from where we shaped this on the 2x72. We're gonna use the oscillating spindle sander, also known as a drum sander, uh, to go ahead and smooth everything out I will tell you, if you're going to use something like a sander like this or a small wool attachment, you want to make sure that you're constantly moving it. You don't want to get waves or ripples in the steel because you focus too long on one section. You want to constantly be moving it so that you don't get those weird indentions that you're going to try and chase away uh, by having to sand way past that. So just make sure you're constantly moving it, not letting it sit in one spot. And I really like using these for shaping the finger choils and getting those nice and smooth. This will take off a lot of material, but it's not as aggressive as the 2x72. Now, when it comes to how I choose my handle shapes, so like 
whether I'm gonna have flares on the end of them or I'm gonna contour them. I try and think through what is this gonna be used for? How is it going to be? Is it gonna be a chopper? Is it gonna be a chef's knife? Is it gonna be a survival knife? There's gonna be things that you gotta think through. So whenever I do the flare towards the back it's because I know that I'm gonna be chopping and swinging the knife forward and I don't want it to fly out of my hand. Same thing with something that is meant to stab. You want to make sure you have a nice finger choil. You want to make sure that your hand can't go past where your the handle is and you end up going up to the blade because you need to be able to stab things with it. So think through what your knife is going to be used for and shape your handle accordingly. You know, grab something and swing it in your hand and see where the grip starts slipping and go, okay, well I need to flare that here, move this this way and go that route when you're thinking about it. Now for this, I am going to sand this all the way up to 1000 grit. Um, the last one that I did with my Carta, I only sanded up to about 500 grit. But for this, I am going to buff it to a pretty high polish, so I'm going to go start with 220, I'm going to go up to 360, I'm going to do 500, and then I'm going to go straight from 500 to 1000. Now, I'm not going to show every single portion of this because unlike the other things where I'm moving the knife around a lot and doing a bunch of different angles and shapes and stuff like that, this is me doing the same exact thing. I do the same type of sanding for all different grits. So you watch me do it once, I just do that times four. <laughs> so that's all you got to really see is just me doing it this one time and then copy and paste uh, the different grits of sandpaper. I will tell you this, focus on going with the grains of the wood if you're doing wood. Make sure you're focusing on that. Make sure you're looking for where there are lines and markings from the 2x72 or whatever belt grinder you use to do the shaping or even if you use files and rasps so that you know where you can sand. And then also make sure that whenever you're going to be doing your handle scales, think about your pins. Uh, you're going to need to make sure that you're sanding to where you get rid of the scratches in the pins so that when you go to buff the handle, those buff out. You might have to sand a couple of different directions and then finish sand one direction so you get nice smooth pins. Now for the handle, we are going to use the soft buffing wheel with a green compound and we're going to get this buffed up real well so that it has a nice glossy shine to it. And I will tell you, you need to be careful whenever you're doing this because a buffing wheel can catch a knife very quick and throw it into your stomach, can throw it into your arm, your hand, and even though this does not have an edge on it. It is still very pointy and will stab you. All right, guys, let's go ahead and wrap up today's daily vlog. And for one, I want to start with, I am incredibly dusty. I mean, this, my Carta is the dustiest stuff to work with. It is so ridiculous, but we get an insanely awesome result. Look at that. Look at those handle scales with those liners. And they call this Mallard Green on Texas Knife Supply. Went ahead, like I said before, did this taper towards the back where the lanyard goes and it's so that the lanyard does not stick out past the sides of the handles and of course we did a lanyard on there three snake knots up here gap three snake knots with steel beads in between them and look at that blade I mean got a little smudge on here <laughs> look at this thing is that not awesome with that texture up there? I love the way this knife looks. It's absolutely massive and I cannot wait to sharpen it. 
and go ahead and slice and dice and chop some stuff. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next video. We're going to go ahead, put an edge on it. Now, the edge geometry on this is going to be pretty beefy because this is meant to be a chopper. It's not meant to be a slicer to where you're slicing tomatoes and all that stuff. But we are still going to try and like slice some water bottles and stuff like that. But absolutely beautiful knife. Y'all tell me what y'all think about this. Tell me what y'all think about those handle scales. That lanyard on there. Ah, I love this. But hey, if y'all would, give this video a thumbs up. Share this video or a video I've done in the past that might be your favorite. And if you have not yet, let me get over here real quick. All right, there. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on the notification bell so you get notified of when we put an edge on this and we chop some stuff. Guys, we have another really cool build that's going to be happening after this. But before we get to that point, edge, sheath, that's what we're going to be doing. Thank you all for coming by. Thank you all for spending your time with me and checking that bad boy out. Y'all have an amazing day. Stay safe out there. And I'll catch y'all next time. <laughs>